A lot of people don't know this, but California now has a new death tax on property, and it hits people who have just lost a parent. And let me explain why this is so important. It used to be for decades that when parents transferred property to their children, a home of any value and up to a million dollars of other property, assessed value, taxable value of other property, could be passed from parents to children with no change to the tax bill. So you would inherit property, you would also get the same tax bill that your parents were paying. Well now that's gone. It's gone. So when property is passed from parents to children, it is reassessed to current market value. So your property tax bill could go from two or three thousand dollars a year to fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a year. And that's every year. You're paying a tax increase of tens of thousands of dollars every year as a condition of keeping what you already own, the property you already own. And it's crushing people. People who don't have a lot of money but someone passes away and leaves the house to them, unless they move into it within a year and make it their permanent primary residence, it is reassessed to current market value. And even if they do move in to their parents' residence and make it their primary residence, they may owe the taxes anyway because the assessor's offices are so far behind processing all these claims, people are being told, well, just write us a check for thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars dollars 15000 dollars $50,000 to cover these taxes, and when we get there, we'll refund it to you if you don't owe it. Really? That's an appalling policy. And to do this to people at a moment when they have literally just lost their parent and inherited something, they get these letters in the mail at the same time as the sympathy cards. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because it was slipped into Proposition 19 in 2020, which looked like it was about protecting wildfire victims. If you think back, you'll remember there was one measure, tons of TV commercials, all about wildfire victims, and sometimes about seniors moving to a new home. And that, that's fine. That was in there. That's fine. Nobody's changing that. But in the fine print, there was this tax increase on people who just lost a parent. And this we want to reverse. So Proposition 19 was put on the ballot by the legislature. It originated as an idea from the California Association of Realtors, but the legislature took it over and they mixed up several different provisions. There was the provision that allowed seniors to move to a new home three times anywhere in the state and take their old property tax valuation with them to the new home so that they weren't giving up the low property tax bill in retirement, possibly on a fixed income, they wouldn't be able to move. So the idea was to help people move. Once they were 55, they could sell a home, move to a new home anywhere in California, take their property tax basis with them to a home of any value, not just less the same or lesser value, which was the old law, but any value and any county. And that was very helpful to people, no question about it. The other part of Prop 19 was protection for wildfire victims who lost their home in a disaster. Same thing, they could move to a new home, take their property tax basis with them. But this was in the fine print. It was not in the advertising. This death tax repealed Proposition 58 and Proposition 193. Now let me tell you the history of that. In 1978, Proposition 13 passed and that limited increases in property taxes. And the way it did it, first by cutting the tax rate, which had been in some places 3%, the statewide average was 2.67%, on the market value of your property every year. Well, in the 1970s, inflation was pushing those property values up sometimes 20% a year, and people could not pay those taxes. All of a sudden, they get tax bills that are tripled. It's crazy, they couldn't pay it. People were so upset that Proposition 13 got a million signatures, or maybe two million, as an initiative, went on the ballot and passed with a two-thirds vote, nearly a two-thirds vote approval. It cut the tax rate to 1%, and it capped the increase in the assessed value. So every year, for as long as you owned your property, even if the market went up 20%, your increase in your assessed value was capped at 2%. If you go to guessinggame.org on the Howard Jarvis website, it will do the math for you to show you what you'd be paying today if Prop 13 had never passed. Don't do it while you're driving or if you have a pacemaker. So that was Prop 13. 
A few years went by and people were inheriting property and the legislature considered that a change of ownership just as if it was an outside sale. People were very upset because they were inheriting property, inflation had pushed the value up, the tax bill was unaffordable, and they had to sell the family home that they had just inherited. So upset were the people of California that the legislature did something to fix it. They created a parent-child transfer exclusion from reassessment so that parents could transfer a home of any value and up to a million dollars of other property. And that would be a small business, maybe a vacation cabin, maybe a duplex or a small apartment building that someone had bought for income in retirement, up to a million dollars of other property, assessed value of other property, plus the home of any value could be transferred to the kids with no change to the tax bill. Didn't count as a change of ownership, no reassessment. That was passed in the legislature in 1986 unanimously. Not one single vote against it. And it was a constitutional amendment, so it went on the ballot for voter approval. It was approved by 75% of the voters of California in 1986. And now it's gone because Proposition 19 repealed it, took it away, and also took away 10 years later in 1996 the same rules for grandparents and grandchildren if the children's parents were deceased. So in that sad situation, the grandparents could pass property to their grandchildren, same rules, a home of any value, up to a million dollars of assessed value of other property. That's gone too. We have to put it back. So what does our initiative do? What does the Repeal the Death Tax Act do? It restores the parent-child transfer exclusion just as it was, a home of any value and up to a million dollars of assessed value of other property. It restores the grandparent-grandchild exclusion when the children's parents are deceased. And it is retroactive. It is retroactive. So anyone who got burned while this was in effect, which is ever since February 15th or 16th of 2021 till now, anyone who got burned for a parent-child transfer will be able to get their original assessed value reinstated. We can't get anybody a refund for what they paid while it was owed, but we can get the original assessed value reinstated as if the reassessment did not happen. But we can only do it if we get a million signatures by the, let's call it the end of January, we need them fast. We need a million signatures to the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association office in Sacramento on the petition, and then it will go on the November 2024 ballot and people can vote on it again without all of the confusion of the wildfire victim commercials and the rest of it. Just let's look at this tax increase issue by itself in the daylight and decide if that's the policy we want or we want the policy we lost. I think people will want the policy we lost. I think they want the parent-child transfer so people don't lose their family property to taxes. It's not just homes. This also affects tenants because there are millions of units of housing in California, millions of households in buildings that have one to 19 units. So that could be a house or a condo, could be a duplex, could be a, a small apartment building with less than 20 units. Many of those are owned by mom and pop landlords. When that generation passes and the kids inherit the building, guess what? Reassessed to current market value, no exclusion at all on income property. So that's reassessed to current market value. An apartment building in a place like Los Angeles or San Jose or San Francisco or San Diego or almost anywhere in California that's been long held by a family is going to see a huge property tax increase. What's going to happen to the tenants? Many times you can't raise the rent because of rent control or because the tenants can't pay it. So what's going to happen? Most likely that building will be sold and then the tenants will be evicted. And who's helped by that? We could lose half the affordable housing in California in one generation because of this. And all the small businesses. Imagine a restaurant property that a family has owned for two generations. And they own the, they own the property, not just the business, but the property that it's on. And the generation passes and the kids inherit it. That business property is reassessed to current market value. How does a restaurant stay in business after all they went through with COVID, the loans they had to take out to stay open, 
the debt they took on, all of the problems they had, the cost of labor, the cost of food. How do they stay in business when they get this huge, unexpected property tax bill? And at the worst possible time in your life when you've just lost your parent. It's horrible. It's terrible policy. And it, it can be reversed. It can be reversed through the initiative process, a constitutional amendment, repealthedeathtax.com is where you can get the petition. Fill it out, sign it, mail it back, do it today because there isn't a lot of time to get this done and we really need to fix this problem.